The Secrets of Stargate, Episode 74. Hello and welcome to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies and series, including SG-1, Atlantis, Universe, and more. I'm Father Corey Stika. With me today are Lisa Jones and Victor Lance. Howdy, Lisa. Hey, Father Corey. Howdy, Victor. Who is this Victor? I am Meat Mop. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm just messing with you. I'm really Victor. <laughs> yeah. Meat Mop is my beneath the surface name. Yeah. So we're... Uh, Got a little bit of a surprise for you. Today, we are doing our first video recording as well as audio recording. So you can find our, our, this video on YouTube. Instead of watch, listening to the audio, you can see our smiling or not so smiling face in the case of Victor. But uh, <laughs> actually, it's funny. I didn't, even, I didn't even look at the video and he was sitting there straight faced at that exact second. <laughs> We're all going to get real self-conscious this episode. <laughs> it just good. happened to work out that way uh but go check out or check out this video you know let us know what you think of being able to watch us instead of uh uh just listen to us you know get to see see what we think what you think of us let you let us know what you think of us that's what i'm trying to say yeah. <laughs> but before we begin i'd like to invite you to join our discord server we're having a lot of fun and you can join in discussing all our shows get your invite at sqpn.com slash discord all are invited to join even if you're not a patreon patron also, you can go to sqpn.com slash merch to get your t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and much more, including a Father Corey collection for some reason. I don't know why they would want that, but they have it, and you can get it. Today, we're discussing Beneath the Surface, the 10th episode from the fourth season of Stargate SG-1. Three workers, Jonah, Thera, and Carlin, have been toiling away in a labor plant underground when suddenly a fourth worker, Tor, claims he is actually Tilk of SG-1. Turns out the members of SG-1 had false memories implanted that turned them into workers for a civilization that keeps an ice age at bay inside a giant domed city. Jack was going to reveal Administrator Calder's secret slave labor, but instead became part of that labor force. Jonah, Jack, and Thera, Sam, have developed a relationship, while Carlin, Daniel, is initially estranged from the others. After Teal'c's memories begin to resurface and he is hauled away due to night sickness, the other members of SG-1 start questioning their false memories, causing the real memories to return. Brenna, the plant supervisor, has decided to help SG-1 escape, but the administrator and two bodyguards show up in a futile attempt to stop them. Instead, SG-1 is able to free their fellow slaves and recover their memories to Jack and Sam's mutual disappointment. So I got to ask it first. Lisa, what did you think? (laughs) Yes, this is one of my favorites, obviously. I mean, the whole of season four. Uh, in fact, when I was rewatching it, my 16 year old daughter was in the room and she goes, Beneath, I'm not going to scream as loud as she did, I promise. She yeah. was like, Beneath the surface, I love this episode. And I put, like, Me too. And <laughs> <laughs> this is Stargate sci fi episode you got all of the sci-fi drama you know you don't know what's going on there's some something twisty with the plot and futuristic uh but it's all built on relationships and it's team relationships it's general hammond with the team it's even brenna with the workers and of course sam and jack and they um i don't know they they go a little further than they did in divine conquer but they don't go as far as we can talk about later, like how they even plan to go further with it. And then mm-hmm. they, they acknowledge it and they move on, which is kind of what I like about Stargate. It doesn't turn into a soap opera, but they, but they give us all of those kind of juicy, meaty relationship stuff. How, how about you, Victor? <laughs> it certainly was a low rent adaptation of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. <laughs> I mean, the entire time I was watching this, I was thinking I could be watching Metropolis again. I like that movie. Um, and that was made in 1927. But no, we, we have the, it, it doesn't do a lot for me. There's a lot of kind of repeated beats in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of a, a, a slog for me personally to watch this. I don't mm-hmm. like amnesia episodes. You know, I find them kind of annoying. It's like we know who the characters are and it's it's watching the characters figure out who they are is never is never that entertaining to me. Um, there were some things I I did like. Uh, I'll probably think of them later. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I'm 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 open to being convinced on this one. 
<laughs> Don't worry, I'll do it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I'm definitely kind of in the middle again. Um, I, I like this. I've always liked this one. I mean, I, it it is kind of fun. And admittedly, yes, the fact that you've got Sam and, and Jack having to have an actual relationship and be open about it and not the little clever window of opportunity thing, you know, or it's just a quick kiss after, you know, you resign and stuff like that, but an actual relationship. And, you know, I, I it's kind of, I like the idea that they were able to turn the tables on the administrator, even though they don't fully know why, you know, and, and things like that, you know, it's just that they're the character, the character themselves still comes through, even when their, their minds are wiped, you know, Daniel is still Daniel, even if he's somebody else, you know, Jack is still Jack, Tilk is still Tilk, Sam is still Sam, even if they're thinking they're someone else in, from a different life. So I, I do kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, it's, it could get tedious, but it really didn't. That's the thing. It does kind of move pretty well, too. So, so let's jump into this. They're in this world where, uh, in a world where, no. Uh, in a world where half the people <laughs> live above the surface in a domed city, while the other half toil underground to support the l- way of life for those in the dome. It's, yeah. it's We've seen this. I mean, <laughs> well, like I mean, it I said, goes all the way back to war, uh, uh, yeah. the, the time. Time machine, you know, yeah, the, the Disney version of Time Machine, where you got the Morlocks and the e- Eli, Eloy, yeah, yeah, Eloy, you know, where you've got the people up top that are living the, the happy life, and the people underneath that are toiling in in tunnels, and yeah, and also it's, it's not an unknown theme by any stretch yeah. of imagination. If you think about it with movies and TVs and books, very few new and original ideas. It's all in how they tell their version mm-hmm. of it. Exactly. At least Metropolis had a cute robot. Though I mean that was like I said, nineteen twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah, you have the workers working on the the heart machine. You know, there's an explosion. You know, there's there's this whole thing going on. It's it's a lot more visceral. Um, you know, in that movie, there is a uh, you know a, a rich aristocrat uh, or a son of a rich aristocrat who who sees the the machine and the people toiling on it, and it like morphs in front of your eyes into a temple uh, to 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 Moloch, and and all these workers are being sacrificed in this huge forge and stuff. And this episode never really, I mean, I, I, I don't, I can't tell, you know, for, for a prison, like it, it's not really a prison camp because the people there seem to be like cool with serving because they used to work, like they've had their memories implant, implanted. And that's kind of like the, the method of servitude is that people have had their memories implanted. But even if you have like the memories of being a worker, like, why would you want to work in a place where you like get a cracker and some gruel for lunch? You know, yes. I mean, they think they're saving their people, that they're the yeah. heroes or that they're the only people left and they have to yeah. work in this underground civilization. Yeah, maybe they don't know. Well, and they, yeah. And they, they did say they had like, you know, hydroponics bay or something like that. You know, they had some kind of, uh, you know, resources that they needed to keep and that they were trying to keep the power going to and stuff like that. So they knew that there were other people involved. They didn't just didn't know. That there was a mega city literally on top of them that these, you know, they thought that these skylights were covered in snow and ice and it turns out they were just frosted, basically. Yeah, there's shades of like Bioshock in there too with like this, this huge city that's supported by this dome and there's, you know, this, this, you know, kind of art deco way of life. And of course that took inspirations from, uh, from Metropolis as well. Mm -hmm. Well, of course we should mention that, you know, not long after this aired. There was a Star Trek Voyager episode aired with very similar themes called Workforce, where some of the Voyager crew gets gets captured and has their minds changed so that they go and work in this modern, you know, this futuristic city for the good of the city. Gee, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they copied from Stargate. Yes. Now, they had to have been in production at the same time. I mean, just given how long it takes to to put an episode of Star Trek out. But it just kind of there was something in the water about you know working i guess or the kind of jobs that people were working i suppose that you know made it a common recurring theme that i think was a two parter which was yes. unforgivable <laughs> at least as we get through it in 42 minutes <laughs> again not a fan of amnesia episodes you're, you're equal across the board yeah. right you're consistent yeah. <laughs> i well, did bring and, and, my drink cuz i knew y'all were going to mention star trek so. Well, yeah, and I, I will, I will say for that one, there was, <laughs> there was one scene in that one that just drove me nuts. And it was where, you know, mind wiped Janeway was so thrilled when she got invited, not to marry the guy, but to live with the guy 
It was like the big step to live with the guy. Oh. That uh, she was. And the actor was, was that a, was that, it wasn't the actor who played Naveen. It was, it was a different actor. I'll have to look that up. I don't remember who it was, but, <laughs> but anyways, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right. This was, this was a very common theme at that point. This, yeah. you know, some, either, either there was some mutual connection there that got the idea to both places or, you know, they're both kind of thinking along the same lines. It's just kind of funny that the two episodes came within, you know, less than a year. It was six months apart, you mm-hmm. know, so it's it kind of yeah. interesting. Something in the was, water. Completely different actor. <laughs> yeah, but we uh, we open a course with you know the the mind wiped team uh, SG one mm-hmm. team laboring away under this in this you know very dark and dismal and and, and dirty nasty you know corroded environment. I mean it was they they did a good job of making it just uh-huh. look awful. I mean just just a place you would you would not want to set foot in ever. Yeah, all the colors and it was even it, it, you know. It, the way it looks yeah. on screen is very dark and it can have dirt and unless you're a fan of like bronzed well well built shirtless guys well yeah yeah and, there was a lot of that and because you know peter deloise uh directed this episode heather ash uh heather ash wrote it peter deloise directed it so he's in there somewhere i was not able to pick out which bronze shirtless i don't think he was wearing i think he was wearing a shirt <laughs> he, he doesn't look like out. the kind that's going to be a buff shirtless yeah. guy let's yeah. put it that way I'm I'm sure he 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 is very well you know like built and stuff, but it is uh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't pick him out in the background. So if you if you did and you can give us like a timestamp, just yeah. let us know because uh, I, I forgot to look no. in the beginning. He's usually towards the beginning of an episode, and I wasn't looking yeah. right away. Oh, okay. So this was you, where you might, all course- of the all of the 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 uh, bouncers who play Jaffa. Now got yeah. to yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, I had, I had to laugh because one of the one of the actors was Bruce Campbell, uh-huh. and I went going, wait, what? No, not that <laughs> yeah, Bruce not, Campbell, not Army of the, the Dead. Same one. This this is a different Ron Ash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this is not the same Bruce Campbell. This is actually an actor who was kind of a uh, he was another yeah. you know a, a, a stunt stunt double kind of per actor and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Did a lot of little behind the scenes roles and things like that. Uh, but it's still when I saw that in the credits, like wait. Did I miss Bruce Campbell in this? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he was the guy who got the gruel and went grueling. Yeah, gruel-y. yeah, that exactly. was my, that That's was my stretch do. joke. Yeah. So they all um, got makeovers. Mm-hmm. All well, yeah, makeovers. yeah, we did. Yeah, this is this is the uh, the the great uh, shavening or shortening episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now before we go to that though, talking about you know buff guys, I think this this is the start of the buff Daniel. Yes, yes. I was gonna say this that is was the his first time over. we see him buffed up. <laughs> he got to show off what he's been, I guess, doing in this off season. Yeah, because usually usually he's wearing long you know long sleeve shirts. So mm-hmm. this is the first episode where they show him with the short sleeve or the tank top style shirt, and you get to see the get to see the guns come out. And I think that as we go on series, I mean seasons, we see it more and more with him. And I oh yeah. Read an article years ago that Michael Shanks really didn't like, and I could be wrong, but this is what I remember, that he really didn't like playing the nerdy Mm -hmm. scientist. I mean, after a while, he wanted to evolve. And so this was part of his evolution was getting to show off that side of him. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, yeah, because later on, he starts wearing a lot more t-shirts. They start getting a little more form fitting to show off his physique (laughs) and stuff like that. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there were a couple, you know, shirtless episodes eventually, you know, but yeah, this is where we start getting to see Danny. But like you said, also they, uh, they all change Tilk's, mm-hmm. Tilk's beard goes away. Tilk's hair yep. goes away. Yeah. And Carter's hair goes away. Yeah. Real short. And Jack grows hair. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got a lot of kind of a stubble. scruffy, stubble. scruffy mm-hmm. beard going on. It's not often we see him scruffy. So out of yeah. uniform. So to, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was Daniel contributing to this episode? Like he had a dream <laughs> and that was like, he had a and, dream then, about Jack. <laughs> and then there's this thing with, with another one of the, uh, I don't know, workers, prisoners, uh, uh, Kagan or Keegan. Kagan. And, and, um, you know, she's always like, oh, don't rock the boat. They'll, they'll think you are a night mm-hmm. sick or a sick mm-hmm. nighter or whatever. Yeah. Which is probably the weakest, like fictional, <laughs> you know illness i've ever heard of it's it's just yeah. a, it's just another name for going crazy basically is what it is yeah. but, you know it's but if you're no, trapped it, under underground doing yeah. this kind of work you could yeah. it could go a little <laughs> i don't know bonkers. i just yeah but um but she was stirring up trouble too because she's like they just want to suck up to brenna and 
yeah brenda's brenda's like the real hero or protagonist of this like none of sg1 really does anything it's really if you look at who's doing this and moving the plot along and it's Mm -hmm. really brenna who uh is saving the day and and so hats off to brenna yeah well i mean if anything it's you know like like sam of course she's she's still the brainiac so she's coming up with all these ideas and it gets brenna in that position where she goes to the the administrator who i love it he's sitting there like first time she she goes up there he actually takes a a a a handkerchief to grab her folder he doesn't want to be sullied by the the dirt on the folder but then he immediately touches it with his other hand yeah exactly (laughs) and then washes his hands afterwards yeah Anyone and else then, you know, flashbacks? then when they show the flashback of Jack talking to him, saying, basically, we're going to expose you and we're not mm-hmm. going to work with you. Uh, he's sitting there eating uh, kiwis. Yes. Yeah. Sliced kiwis. Very nice. Just big old, big old bowl of kiwis. Like, like that looked good. <laughs> yeah. It was very vibrant and green. Yeah. I thought that was a nice contrast to them when you see all the gruel and the brown. And, and that's, the underground. And that's yeah. the point, you know, it's showing, oh, well, I mean, like his handkerchief was bright red, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's showing off the decadence of the people up top. Versus the people downstairs, down below that are suffering and, and they're, you know, yeah, they're eating a scoop of gruel and some flatbread and that's their meal. That's it. They get yeah. nothing else. Yeah. And, um, yeah, talk about non from last episode yeah. on yeah. flatbread, but anyways. Um, yeah. So what was SG one's like crime against the, and, we, and what's funny too, is like they, they have a, you know, P3 name for the planet, but they never have a name for the planet or the people. When Hammond's talking, yeah. he's like, any word from the planet? What did right. the guy on the planet say? And, <laughs> and it, is, it is interesting. They don't even bother to give him a name. But right. SG-1's big crime was not that they disapproved of them having a slave labor force, but they passed judgment on, uh, on, mm-hmm. the, on the people. And so that's kind of what set the, uh, the administrator guy over the edge. And dis- that was what made him decide to uh, put them all into the, uh, the Huskow or whatever, Shanghai them. And uh, the other big hero of the episode, so we have Brenna, who is kind of like the foreman, foreperson, mm-hmm. or chief runner of this place. Um, I said, I, th- I figured plant supervisor. You plant know, supervisor, yeah. 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 And so we, we have her, she's good. And then we also have um, Major Griff, who is, no, uh, right, who comes yeah. out, who comes into his own in this episode. He's like. You know, off the record, this guy's lying, you know, yeah. n- they didn't walk off into the glacier and die. You know, this, this, he's just lying to us. And so, you know, again, hats off to Major Griff for being well, so. Uh, and he, he, he doesn't even he, get, they don't even say what team he's with. Of course, we right. know through other things that he's on with SG2. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we don't, you know, it doesn't say that anywhere that he's on SG2. It just says that he's, he took an SG team out to the planet right. and he was ready to take a team uh, by the way, this is one of the things that I think they they missed on. They should have had allowed him to take a SWAT team, take a you know take a, a search and rescue mm-hmm. team off and get them out of the out of the uh, plant instead of having them basically escape through Rena's help. Yeah, yeah, because what SG One actually does is it's really weak. They're just like, oh, I remember a snippet. I remember a snippet too. Oh, yeah. we all remember snippets. Let's go over here. And then <laughs> and, Brenna says, and, yeah, you guys aren't, you guys don't belong here. I'm getting you guys out. And it, yeah. But I think well, that we're missing the point on Brenna though. Brenna knows that both sides exist. Yeah. yeah. And sh- where is she stuck? She's not eating Kiwi with Administrator Calder. Yeah. No, that's She's true. She's stuck running or supervising the plant underground with all the dirty workers. And, and so it's really I mean, you think about her as a character, it's really very interesting because she's, she knows what's going on. She knows mm-hmm. all of what's going on. And she, it's like her awakening to the morality of what's happening. And it's not against the workers, it's against SG-1 that she right. doesn't want Tilk to die and doesn't want right. all of them to die. Yeah, well, she knows, she's, she's aware that they're there un- unjustly, that they, mm-hmm. you know, there was, they should not have been sent down there. They're not, they're not from that planet. They're not part of that race. And, and by the way, I, I, it never says it, but the, uh, the administrator wants Stargate addresses mm-hmm. and that was yeah. the deal that the, the, uh, earth would get, you know, metallurgic work and technology and so on. And they would get Stargate addresses. Well, why would they get Stargate addresses? So they can get more mm-hmm. slave labor. People. They would become the yeah. gold. 
I totally you know. didn't pick up on this, but I was watching it with our nine year old. And then as soon as as soon as Hammond said, oh, they just wanted Stargate addresses, yeah. my nine year old says, so they can get more slaves. And I was oh, like, yeah, oh, go. wow. Yeah, he got yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But so she she was aware how uh, uh, unjust it was, especially when you have that scene where she's like, we can you do this, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Sam Thea, Thera comes up with this idea and it can make it things a little more efficient, make things safer. Whoa, but you, then you'll get it. So all the work is being done without people. Yeah. And right. he, you know, we talked it, before in other episodes about absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's, he's sitting there like, aha, I got all of the, you know, I can do whatever I want with these people. I got a whole workforce at my disposal. I can live the life and do all the things and control all the people. And, why not make yeah. it bigger and better? Yeah. And I mean, in defense of Administrator Calder, he kind of <laughs> did have a point, like reintegrating all those workers into their like utopian dome city. They're not really <laughs> equipped to deal with that many refugees, right? <laughs> you know, they may have the space, they may have the resources, but, you know, it's just not, you know, it, maybe if we if, if they did come up, he could put them on a bus and, and yeah, have yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I was say, you know, he can, he can call their... Their, you know, their, their security yeah. that we see later with their Nintendo zappers and, and you know, <laughs> haul them off in yeah. a bus. and Just just memory stamp them. Remember stamp them. Come on. They won't remember yeah. they were workers. Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> Call them in, in black. <laughs> right. And then uh, you mentioned that the uh, we do see at the end and we'll, we'll get back to what's going on with Teal'c because that's a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we keep talking about Teal'c has nothing to do, but. In this episode, he's like unconscious. He's one of the more important characters in the yeah. episode. Yeah. Well, he comes in and says like, soil and green is people. It's made of people. And then they're like, oh, they didn't. <laughs> let's get him out of here and restamp yeah. him. And so they restamp him. And he's like, I don't know what you are talking about. Now I will lay down in bed. And yeah. <laughs> I will get sick. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, and then it's like, what's like, we don't really know. Like, is Teal faking it? Because at one point he opens his eyes and is like, I'm totally faking it. Yeah. And then at the, when they go up to to Brenda's office, he's been like laying there for a day and um, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I guess he's sick. And then Jack's like, you know what it is? It's that Kel or Daniel or just like, it's that yeah. Kel Marim thing. Yeah. If he doesn't meditate, he gets really sick. And so it's like question asked and answered within yeah. the space of four seconds. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, OK, I guess that's what was he going wasn't on making with it. Yeah. <laughs> really- I guess Actually, I guess that's a st- something that happened. I mean, it's really I love it when no dramatic when she tension. Says- do not take those bandages off, you know, under yeah. no circumstances. And you see Till kind of open his eyes like, mm, I wonder what <laughs> I happens if I take the here, yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he's the one that as soon as he realized something was different, all his memories came back. He could reconnect yeah. with his symbiote and all his memories came back. And Brenna does say that to SG-1, the rest of SG-1, that as soon as they get home and they realize that they were stamped, their memories will come back faster. So yeah. I know that it seems like a light switch, but A, I think you kind of had to because it's the end of the episode, but they did give us a little bit of explanation for it. Well, and, and they did it's say like, that that humans from Earth are different than yeah. the, different assuming humans of this world. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, human descendants. Uh, one, one thing I did mention is that at the uh, end, we see the, bo- the, the uh, administrator and his bodyguards. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have weapons that looked really familiar for those of us who grew up in the 80s. And if you're watching this on video, you, I'll be able to show you one. I've got one just like it. Ooh. For those who can't Third. see it, it's, it's a Nintendo Zapper. And I'll, I'll, I'll even prove that to you. If, if you're listening to this and you grew up in the 80s, you'll recognize this sound. <laughs> the clicky of the Zapper. Yes. So yep. the, the, the weapons they used at the end were actually cut down Zappers. They took the Zapper. Again, I'm going to show it on video because I can. I like this having video. And they cut, they cut it basically right here. Mm-hmm. And that was, and then they painted it red and black instead of the orange and gray of the Nintendo. So they cut it right at the end, right the right at the end of the handle, I guess you could say. Uh, so it was a uh, pretty wild to see that, and you know, so it didn't quite notice it until I happened to look in the wiki, and it was like, oh wait, yeah, those those absolutely one hundred percent were Nintendo zappers with just a short shortened barrel. Yeah, and it really harkens back to the time when, like, you know, and you see this all over Star Trek too, where they had to like find props they couldn't just like fire up a 3d printer or you know and and just make whatever they needed so they had to buy stuff off the shelf or or like you said take what they could get some zappers and you know cut them down and stuff so it's really uh pretty inventive there had to be creative yep yeah which which admittedly you know nintendo zappers even today are are relatively easy to get because they they made literally millions of them (laughs) and millions of them sold and millions of them still work but it's still kind of a shame now that Nintendo zappers are going on 
40 years old and they're actually Oof. starting to be, you know, a little bit collectible. Yeah, I know. They, I just yeah. made, no ourselves, made us feel old, you know. <laughs> I was going to do a duck hunt dog reference. And go, right. But now I'm, ooh, now ooh, I'm, ooh, ooh. yeah. I was good at duck hunt. <laughs> yeah. I always wanted to shoot the dog. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me. <laughs> but anyways, enough secrets of Nintendo. Yeah. It was, was, yeah. was kind of cool to see them use, use that. Use something like that to, to. For the, for, the, cool. for a fu- uh, futuristic gun. Mm-hmm. So, it was <laughs> interesting that General Hammond portrayed the society as so uh, advanced technologically. Mm-hmm. They have um, flying cars. I mean, if you look yeah, outside the I dome. We, it was neat that he said it, but we didn't actually see it, uh, you know, much. Yeah. It was, uh, and then they wanted the gate technology, which I wonder where they, where they, I mean, what did they know about the gate? We didn't get into that. How shocked yeah. were they when SG one walked through, and did they know where to go? Yeah, right. they, you know, did they have any interaction with the gate? Yeah, they didn't have the Abydos cartouche, and it kind of makes you think about like what other cultures know about the gate. Mm-hmm. Like we see this more in Atlantis, where they they do establish that these planets trade with the other planets even mm-hmm. before right. the humans get there, and so they they may know a few addresses, uh, you know, but they don't have the full. Right. The full cartouche or the full phone book there. Well, and, and there's <laughs> there's the SG one episode later where the uh, the race it's kind of a Nazi like you know, not at least Nazi uniform looking race. They think that the the gate as a, like a religious symbol, and they've got it in their museum. Oh, and then of course SG one comes out in the middle of a tour, mm-hmm. you know, of the museum. You know, and they were shocked to find out this was actually a way to travel across the universe. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I did like the way they started this episode that it wasn't them uh, initially meeting yeah. the, this planet and the people and, you know, that we opened with not only what the heck's going on, but they already had an established relationship with right. Administrator Calder, like we did in 100 Days and some of these others, where we kind of walk into the middle of their um, diplomatic relations versus mm-hmm. from the beginning. So I always like that. It gives a little Highly- more interest. Highly advanced race. They have Tupperware. Which, <laughs> of course. That's which, exactly you know, right. For the slaves. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the Tupperware, the, there's this Tupperware bowl that's actually a major plot point because uh, Jack turns it over and he does the Devil's Tower, you know, thing from Close Encounters. <laughs> Close I was like, Encounters. this means something. And it yeah. turns out he's, it actually like, they like actually, it's not even a match cut. They just like superimpose the dome onto the Tupperware so that Jack is looking at this and thinking of the dome city. Yeah. So that was, yeah. that was a little, yeah, that was a little there. And, um, but <laughs> they do try to liven this up with, with some meta humor that kind of like, it works in some cases and in other cases where he keeps remembering a, a bald man uh-huh. who wears a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> yeah. I think his name is Homer. You know, because yeah. that's, uh, you know, we've established that O'Neill is a fan of The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. And then there's a callback to that where, um, you know, they're revealing, Brenda's revealing that they're from another planet. And Jack goes like, where does Homer fit in? Mm-hmm. You know, so. Uh, yeah, that was good. But, but then, of course, you, at the end, he says, that bald guy. Yeah, I know. General Hammond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I like the way they, they were, you know, all the different things they kind of remembered. Because mm-hmm. Jack saying, you know, in a former, in another life, I think I handled explosives. Yeah. And then Carter calls him sir. And yeah. I can't remember there was another one. Now, that- now, now, the explosives one was a callback to MacGyver. MacGyver. Yeah. It, it is. But at the same time, Jack has handled, like he wanted, when oh, he yeah. was about to nuke Abydos and blows up things yep. with the C4. He's, he's like, done a few, yeah. few nuke and bombs and things like yeah. that. He's had, put, had his fair share of things that go bang. I'll mm-hmm. put that down as a qualified MacGyver reference. <laughs> um, but and then Sam had another dream, and because they're having dreams about the Stargate, and Sam, I know I just like had a dream about a lot of like you know letters and stuff, you know DHG GDO, and Jack goes sounds like a lot of gibberish to me. So there's a, another yeah. kind of meta meta joke. Well, then, for a, you. then of course you got Jack's dream where well, I dreamed about, and he looks at Sam, it's like, yep. oh okay, we know where that one went. Yep, yep. <laughs> and of course, then he also said he dreamed about mining naked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, you, you show well, up, I, you show up I the dug, first day I of mine. Ore. That's yeah. all? I did a <laughs> lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you show up to the first day of mine, right? And, and, you're, and you're naked. That's Is that what it was? <laughs> mine <Yeah>. school. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> or you get to the last day of mine and you haven't, you haven't, you've realized you haven't shown up for mine every day and suddenly there's a test. I, I still have those dreams. About oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. I did no, like kidding. Yeah, I know. I know. We all have those or like, you know, yeah. where do I got to go? I've got to go to school. You know, you know, got to go to stay, but I don't know what school, what room I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. in. I don't know what part of the building it's in. You know, yeah. I have to talk about Stargate, but I haven't watched the episode. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. That's, wait, yeah. Let's yeah. Google. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stargate Wiki, help. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like the way that they, the way that they brought back their memories. It wasn't just all of a sudden they each had their own little tidbits, and the mm-hmm. you know, and Jack is still. I don't. They do this not all the time with him, but a lot of the time they make him more dense, a yeah. little. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's obviously a smart guy, but they always portray him as the kind of least intellectual of the group. I- when I've always wondered to. though, is it being make him least intellectual or is it making him the least willing to accept ah. things he doesn't understand? So here's that. something that's just like occurred you know, to doing me. Some, mm-hmm. Maybe Jack never had his memory stamped. Oh. Maybe he's just playing along because <laughs> Carter's there and she has. <laughs> he's all like, hey, here's an opportunity. <laughs> I got a chance here. It's like 50 first dates or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Did they ever say how long they were down there? Did At we get least, a... Yeah, it was... Teal'c had night sickness for, I think they said like three or five days. So it, it couldn't mm-hmm. have been more than a couple of weeks is what, is what I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean... Yeah. I would assume... I mean, it was long enough that they were able to send SG team in to go and explore parts of the planet. So, you know, that would take probably take a few days. Um, you know, they're talking with the administrator and the administrator, of course, you know, waiting just long enough to say, Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's too late. They're, they're lost. You know, you give up on them, you know, that kind of thing. Cause if, yeah. if it was only a day or two, you know, General Hammond to be like, give up on them. Okay, buddy. What's, what are you hiding on? Right. Me? But right. if it was a couple of weeks, a month or so, you know, That's what I was I mean, long enough for, ever... for Jack to get a good, good, uh, scrub, yeah. scruffy yeah. beard, you know? <laughs> well, they seemed pretty comfy there. You know, and even um, Daniel as Carlin and Kagan, mm-hmm. right, Kagan, you know, so sh- she was obviously already there when he got there. Yep. Um, but they acted like they had an established relationship, mm-hmm. at least friendship. Yeah. And so it just made me wonder, well, how long were they allegedly there? And then, well, and, and then from where we start moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And in, we don't really know that because they, they you know, made it clear that their memories of mining, of course, were implanted and how long mm-hmm. they'd been doing that and how long ago it was, they, you know, there's, so they, they kind of left that as an open question. You yeah. Know, you just, you kind of got to have to go by what's happening on earth at that time, you know, and mm-hmm. how, how is the SGC and General Hammond handling it? Right. That's kind of more how you can, and that's why I figure, you know, about a month or so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I did read a little bit about what they said about the uh, ship thing. Oh, yes. So. The friendship? S- sure. Not the, the, Stargate, the Stargate can take you from world to world, but only the friendship can make you remember who you are. Aw. Can we put that on a shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd wear that. <laughs> <laughs> so they said that when they first uh, wrote the episode, it didn't have this, the Sam Jack relationship in mm. there. And so they needed an emotional hook for the episode. It was lacking. And so they added it. But then... um. They thought it went too far. So it had more than what they showed. They specifically well, kiss. The, and yeah, there was going to be a kiss, but they decided because of window of opportunity not right. to do it. They just did that. And I, I read that Amanda Tapping specifically was like, no, we don't, we don't really want to take it that far on screen. So they Not unless dialed Jack shaves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and showers. And showers, yeah. yeah. So I actually think they found a happy mix. So mm-hmm. I mean, because well, they, they got her yeah. lead, lead, leaning her head on his shoulder, yes. and it looking was, it all was, lovey eyed at him. Yeah. Head on my shoulder. It was overt without being too much. And then I, I really appreciate the fact at the end of the episode, they ended with giving them a moment to yep. kind of acknowledge, and then okay, we're leaving that in the room again. And yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> remember divide and conquer or not? I mean, when about, no, which one was that? Divide and conquer. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to leave that in the room. And 
again. <laughs> but we should we should definitely honeymoon here if we ever get married. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. I like it. I like that they did that. But you think about the um, memories that came forward, the personalities that you mentioned, Father Coriel, it didn't change their personalities. Mm-hmm. Daniel and Jack still had their little banter. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, that still came through. So I liked that. Yeah, well, and, you know, of course, what happens on P3R-118 stays on P3R-118. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like bad um, Well, it does. <laughs> it, 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 it was funny. They, they showed a little bit of banter yeah. where... Daniel calls calls him Jonah. And he goes Jack, Jack. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then he, at one point he said something like, "Do you remember? Did you have that dream too?" And he was like, or he said, "What? What? No, no." You know that. Yeah, where they go back and forth like that. Yeah, so there's still a little fun. bit, a little bit of the interaction between the two of them. And mm-hmm. like I said, Sam was still the the brainiac, and Tilk was still the the muscle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I kind of feel bad. He's he's a very important character but he really doesn't do a lot in this again this is another episode that he's not really a major he character m- he messed up the steam valve and fell over i mean that was <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> well, and he ruined got to, everything yeah. by calling them by their their name right. yeah you know, talk about sg1 and all that he got to open the episode with you must yeah. remember you are friends we are sg1 and they're all like what What's this SG1? That's Mary, a terrible name don't for you a know team. Me? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a great opening to the yeah. episode, right? It's yeah. like, what? Did I miss last week? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we do learn in this episode or it's another reminder that S- the SG C has no prime directive whatsoever <laughs> right? because nope, the resolution for this episode is not like now that you know the truth, you can integrate them into your society. You have a lot to learn <laughs> from these people who have been like working on your boilers. No, Jack's solution is like, fire up the gate. We're taking these people out of here. <laughs> like, to a tropical the, planet with beaches forever. Forget the rest forever, of the people who are know? depending on all this machinery. <laughs> it's like, we're just taking away their Let entire like infrastructure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it's like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> okay, did you think it was interesting that it was Jack in the flashback who was standing up to Administrator Calder? Just that... We've had many episodes where Jack is like, here's the mission, get the technology, no mm-hmm. matter what, we're just doing that. We're not going to worry about all this morality stuff. And Daniel's the one who's always like, meh, 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 you know. And in this one, they didn't even show Daniel in that. Yeah. It was just Jack. Well, and, and I think Jack yeah. was like, okay, we've crossed the line and there's no way I can go back to Earth and say, yeah, we need to trade with these people who have literal brainwashed slave labor you know and he could and of course he's the head of the team so that's his job is to mm-hmm. be the one to meet with the uh administrator and say nope not just no but we're going to reveal everything that's going on at home and yeah. they're going to say no you know and so I, I i can see that that's why it was just jack in there now why it wasn't the rest of sg1 at that point too you know who knows but they really didn't cover that maybe they're still down under with all the yeah the people at that point maybe or in his memory his it's all about him yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, he honestly doesn't remember the rest of the team standing next to him. Yeah, like those people. He's like, and remember when I did this? It's like, yeah, that was that was all of us on the team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. It could totally happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so, anything I, else about this this episode? I did look up the. Uh, oh yes. Oh yes, good. Yeah. The, Europeans. All the names. I just realized they're all European. Okay, so the French called it beneath the ice. The Italians called it beneath the surface. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Spanish called it beneath the surface. Czech, beneath the surface. Hungarian, beneath the surface. Germans, planet of the ice age. Oh, Oh, wow. That's a little more creative for the Germans. That was, I like, well, it is still very literal, though, if you think about it. Yeah, but then you're expecting like dinosaurs and being ridden by people wearing (laughs) loincloths, right? I I suppose suppose they couldn't say. Planet of concentration camp, or yeah, yeah. or yeah. Yeah. just watch Metropolis instead. Oh no! Because, <laughs> seriously, How do watch you Metropolis. watch a 1927 movie? Is it is it out there on Netflix? Uh, it's I probably or I, I don't know where it is on now. And there's like lots of different. There is like a remastered version as of I think maybe a dozen years ago with a yeah like full orchestral soundtrack and stuff. And I've seen clips on YouTube where they've mm-hmm like upscaled it to like 4k and are running it at like 60 frames per second and to its credit like it was so well filmed the first time that like you really don't get anything 
like watching it upscaled and and you know oh, that's good. with the frame rate in- included but yeah i mean you just watch this and you're like this was made like in 1927 like like literally people have been making movies eight years or you know up to this point and suddenly oh, yeah. this comes out you know and it's like really um really interesting yeah. uh we didn't talk much about the other actors in here mm. and i was looking at kim hawthorne who played kagan oh yeah it's kagan or keegan kagan um and i recognized her from greenleaf and a couple other shows but when i was looking through her imbd she was a voice on stargate infinity oh, oh wow she, she really yeah yeah dr carrie mason so from from the height of this episode to the lows of stargate <laughs> infinity <laughs> yeah, yeah i just thought that was interesting i'm like oh she had, yeah huh yeah, we've been watching a lot of the classic MacGyver series now, and it is rare to find an episode of MacGyver starting with like season three that doesn't have someone who shows up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the episode we were watching of MacGyver tonight has one of the main voice actors from Stargate uh, Infinity in it. Hmm. So, oh, really? <laughs> but uh, Administrator Calder played a Father Tim character on MacGyver. Nice. Um, oh, that's yeah, cool. so it, it's pretty amazing when, yeah. you, when you start to go down that rabbit hole. Very good. Well, anything else there, Victor, other than no. you didn't like this and you prefer to watch Metropolis? Did, I did just, we change your mind? I, there's, there is, <laughs> there are some nuggets of goodness in this episode, but there it's still are. an amnesia episode. And, um, I don't know. They stay true like to those. who they were. So it's yeah, good. That's, it's that's good. true. Yeah. Very good. Their brains were only mostly wiped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly dead. No. <laughs> right. Only they mostly dead. Up. Okay. So about a month ago, when we talked about window opportunity, I asked you, uh, those who are patron or Patreon patrons and our discord, uh, users, uh, commenters to take a poll on what was their favorite SG one episode. Well, we've just closed off. I just closed off now the poll and we have the results totally Drum not a please. surprise. Mm-hmm. We had, we had 15, 15 people take the poll. So thank you guys who did you guys and gals who did, uh, Six of you said that window opportunity was absolutely your, your favorite three said 200, yeah. which, ah. which is a good I, I one. Wrote, I wrote is, that one in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, so thank you. There's, there's, there's a couple others that wrote that one in as well. My other two um, hundos as we, as we're known in the fandom. And then two said 2010, which is coming up oh, later this season. One. And of course that's, that's one of my favorites as well. I really enjoy that one. And then we had uh, four of them that had one each. We had changeling the fifth race unending and of course ergo you had to have ergo Ergo, yeah so thank you again to everyone for your your votes on this you know it's fun to hear what other people think is their favorites you know we talked we've talked about ours and you know it's fun to hear from everybody as well and now as we're kind of wrapping up we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of stargate including judson g lawrence v stephanie f paul h elijah m and elizabeth h their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or other podcast apps. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash StarQuest Media. To find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate or email us at stargate at sqpn.com or follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media or on Twitter at SQPN. A lot of ways to get a hold of us. And of course, we're Discord everywhere. as well. Are, 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 yeah, we're everywhere. <laughs> we're everywhere. And of course, at sqpn.com slash Discord to join the conversation there. there. We'll be back next time when we'll be discussing Point of No Return, the next episode of SG-1. Until then, Lisa Jones, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thanks, Father Corey. Victor Lambs, thank you as well. Thanks, Father Corey. It is my honor to serve. <laughs> and once again, I'm Father Corey Stika. Thank you for listening to the secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? <laughs>